Hello everyone and welcome to Porto, the second largest city in Portugal. During this day we will live at the Moca Hotel, which is situated a little bit outside the central of the city. The hotel is a four-star hotel with everything you need. The hotel profiles as modern and has a really nice retro style and music as a main theme of everything here at the hotel. If you want to, you can borrow a guitar in the reception during your stay. Upon arrival, you will handle a Samsung smartphone that you can use during your stay and even take with you when you explore the city. You also had free calls within Portugal and even use the Google map function and web browser. During this day we had a normal standard double room, which had everything we needed during this day. The best way to explore Porto is by public transportation. It's very easy, you just buy a card that you reload and validate before you get on the different vehicles. With the different metro line you can reach almost every point of the city and one hour ticket cost about 150 euro and it's valid for one hour so you can really go everywhere to a cheap amount you have also the option to buy a three day pass or weekly pass if you arrive at the airport it is really easy to go by the metro line into the city center which cost about three euro per person and the journey into the city center takes about 30 minutes one of the most trusty transportation is the cable car, that cost about 6 euro one way. We didn't do this because we thought it was a little bit expensive and one of the main reason is that I'm afraid of heights, so this was not really an option of transportation for us. Porto and Gaia, which is situated in the valley of the Douro river, means that it's up and down if you want to walk between the different places. And if you don't want to walk on the Porto side, you can take this little tram up hill. It was quite expensive, 5 euros for about 8 minutes ride. Because of the deep valley, the metro line doesn't have any stops down at the seaside. So you have to transport it you upwards to take the metro line but we think one of the best way to explore a new city is by foot and because of Porto size it was quite easy to just stroll around and of course we had to visit the different touristy places one of these is the central station with its wonderful mosaic on the walls that symbolizes the city's history. And as in many major cities, you have the main street just outside the central station. And of course we have to walk over the iconic bridge Ponte Luis, which connects Porto and the neighbor city Gaia. The bridge is 148 feet or 45 meters high. We continue our choice to walk and pass by the city hall, which is a really nice building that you can walk in in the entrance and just soak in the wonderful atmosphere. They also have a really nice model over the city and the development over the years. This church with the famous mosaic was just something we passed by by mistake but of course we have to look at it a little bit between the monastery and the church we have the world's smallest house which is only about one meters in wide and the bookstore where they say jk rowling's get inspired for her harry potter books but the queue was really really long so we didn't go in there this time, maybe next visit. There are really a lot of green areas surrounding this city. 
the park that you have a wonderful view over the Douro River and the two cities, Gaia and Porto. But as it is, the city is built in the valley, so it's really up and down walking. On the Gaia side of the river, just opposite Porto, over the Douro River, you have all the famous port wine houses. Sandeman, Burmeister and many more. If you are here, visit the port wine houses that not have the port wine that it sells at home. We did some wine tasting during this day and we tried out the smaller one that was really, really nice. And often the guided tour ended up with a nice tasting of the wonderful beverages. But if you don't want to go tour after tour, you can always pop in and just have a glass of port wine. Try the speciality for just this wine house. If you find port wine that tickles your taste buds a little bit extra, all of the different producers has different easy options for you to send it back to your home with different delivery services. And please walk into the small alleys. You find really nice places that you can try out port wine and eat some nice delicacies from the city. And it's often cheaper than from the main streets. Porto is also one of the safest cities in the world, and you really feel that when you walk around. Porto is famous for the port wine, but it's so much more in food way. And beverages. They have nice local beers of different kinds. And the food is just wonderful. The food is inspired by the closeness to the Atlantic Sea and the River Douro. But you also have a lot of fruit and vegetables that combine this wonderful food in different ways. After all this walking up and down, of course we get hungry. And what better place is to enjoy all this food? Here's some example of what we enjoyed. Just a heads up. The portions on these pictures are mostly half size portions. So you can easily share the different courses with your traveling partner. As I mentioned before, the coastline and the Atlantic Sea is about 20 minutes from the city center. And during a hot summer day, it is really nice to walk along the river and you feel the light breeze from the ocean. Just beside the area of Doro River, you have this little cozy fishing village with lots of nice restaurants that serves grilled fish and seafood. We hope you liked this little quick guide over Porto and Gaia and looking forward to see you 